is Mutizo. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi everyone. Um, so my name is Rose. I'm not from Dublin. I'm from um, Nairobi in Kenya, which is far. I, I, I do this thing where I'm pointing. I'm hoping this is a southeasterly direction. <laughs> <laughs> so Nairobi is that way, I think. Um, yeah, so um, I, I do come to Dublin a lot. I love this place. And actually, Dublin is the first place in Europe I ever came to. And I'm so thankful that Ronan confirmed that this is still in Europe. It's so confusing. <laughs> For the rest of the world, we are so confused about what's happening here. Um, so yeah, so I came first in 2012 and I've been here almost once every year. So I love you people, I love the city, it's um, so great. Um, of course, um, I love Ireland. Uh, Kenya and Ireland have this massive thing in common, which of course is Barack Obama, yes. <laughs> so you're welcome world, <laughs> we gave you Barack Obama. and. Um, I have to say, I was so disappointed that you guys chose to honor the man with a petrol station <laughs> in the literal middle of nowhere, you know, and then gave it this wildly aspirational name, Obama Plaza. No, 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 no. Um, in Kenya, we take this shit seriously. So like, we are serious about Obama mania. We have Obama branded beer. You could like get fabrics with his face all over, make fabulous outfits, look good. We have like countless primary schools, secondary schools like named for him. And the thing that's great about the schools is that this all started when he visited as a senator. So like all of his schools used to be called Senator Obama, like primary school. Then when he was president, they literally painted over. They like, updated the title of the school, which I think is great for the kids. It's like career advancement. Like this is, this is what can happen. Um, anyway, I'm not here to talk about Barack Obama, though I could go on forever. As you know, it's our national pastime. Um, why am I here? I'm here because um, Jessamine, so some of you may know her. She is the director of Bright Club and she's one of my best friends from grad school. So this is all nepotism, no merit. This is <laughs> why I'm here is because I know Jessamine. Um, yeah, so I'm a material scientist and um, who knows what material science is? Woo! Woo! Yeah, so material scientists, we basically um, study the properties, fundamental properties of matter, try to manipulate them, try to create new materials. Um, really long history. So for example, metallurgists who make, mix up metals and make alloys or people who work with composites to make our bikes, our cars, our airplanes stronger, lighter. Um, all of that is material science. Actually, material scientists figure out, si figured out silicon. So um, the entire basis of the electronics industry, IT industry, this is all material science. We are responsible for everything you have <laughs> and get no credit. Like all of these fuckers like Zuckerberg, Elon Musk owe us their fortunes. Like we do all the work. Um, and material science is an interdisciplinary field, but is mostly physics. So I spent my entire research career in physics. Um, and I mean, any physicists in the room in addition to our astronomer, Sean? No? Um, I mean, for reference, physics is a lot of dudes. Um, <laughs> I, I remember the first um, academic conference I went to was a conference of 10,000 physicists. I'm not kidding. Like all of the physicists in the world came together to Pittsburgh for the annual meeting. And I remember like, standing in this hall with all of these physicists buzzing around me. This is my first year, I'm like fresh. And thinking, oh my God, I have never seen so many men with ponytails. Like it is such a thing in <laughs> physics. Like it's, it's crazy. Like the physics dude uniform is like a ponytail, cargo pants, and like Birkenstock, you know, those like weird sandals, <laughs> often with socks. Um, and you know, I, I can rock a ponytail. This is my look, I like the ponytail look, but the cargo pants, I'm like, just no, no way. This is, this is not happening for me. Um, anyway, it's, it's sometimes tough to be a physicist uh, when you're a small African woman and you don't really fit the mold. Um, it took a while for me to kind of embrace that physics identity, though I met a lot of lovely people, people like Jessamine who really supported me and I, I really, really enjoyed my time in physics. Though I will say one thing that still bothered me throughout my career was, you know, I really love the science, I love this discovery, I love all of that stuff, but how does this apply back home? Like, how can I connect this, like, fundamental, crazy material science and physics back home to Kenya? Um, and so after grad school, I 
went into science policy, and so this is kind of where science meets technology meets society. Um, and through this process, I stumbled into energy sector work. And so um, many of you probably not don't know this, but over one billion people in the world don't have electricity at all. Here, I think we have too much electricity. This is like really <laughs> a, lot, a lot of light going on here. Um, and in Africa, in Sub-Saharan Africa, that's two thirds of the population have no electricity. You know, this means really poor quality of life, no power for factories, industries that can create jobs, spur economic development, all of that stuff. And so for me, this is a really interesting interdisciplinary problem that links technology, politics, policy, business, all of this stuff. And I fell in love with that problem. And in the process of this kind of connecting my science with impact, I started to think about what are all of the other big challenges. Um, you know, I, this might come as news to you guys, but we have lots of problems in Africa, it's a lot. Um, also lots of potential. And um, so I moved back to Kenya about uh, a year and a half ago and I founded a think tank. It's called Mawazo Institute. Mawazo means ideas in Kiswahili, so we're the Ideas Institute. And what we do is we um, empower women with ideas. Um, we help women get their PhDs um, and you know build the expertise. Of course, it's not enough to be an expert. You need to be a thought leader. So we train you in communication, how to speak, how to be a leader, so that you could be out there influencing public discourse and doing all of those great things. Um, one problem. Um, in Kiswahili, mawazo technically doesn't mean ideas, um, means thoughts, like thinking, which is good. You know, I think think tank, we're on the money, um, except that um, culturally it's like negative to think a lot in Kenya. It's like the classic trope in Kiswahili literature is this like young woman, like trouble with love, chin in hand, and like with all of this mawazo running through her brain. And so it's it's really tough for us when, you know, our whole thing as an institute is like a bunch of Kenyan women who think a lot. Um, so um, I'm on this like, you know, mission to rebrand the word. And so if anyone, anyone asks you, um, thinking is good, thinking is ideas, women thinking the best. <laughs> so, um, anyway, in all seriousness, I, I really do believe in the power of ideas and, and I'm really uh, honored to be able to help um, other people pursue their ideas and, and find their path to impact. So, thanks. Yeah.